Sparks to 1701 and the Transformers salute all veterans on this Veterans Day. To all our viewers, please give thanks to any veterans you encounter. Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and it's time to take a look at another vintage Transformer toy. In honor of this weekend being Veterans Day, I thought I'd dig up a veteran Transformer. And the first one that came to mind, of course, is the G1 Autobot security agent, Ironhide. Ironhide was released in 1984 as part of the original line of Transformers. He would be also available in 1985. He would be discontinued in 1986, and while we really didn't get a replacement for him, we did get a similar character in the form of Cop. As they both were the grizzled old veteran Transformers, and enjoyed being the tough-talking bots that love to talk down and at the younger Autobots. Now, a common complaint amongst the fans that's brought up about Ironhide, and also about his fellow Transformer Ratchet, is the fact that they do not have heads, unlike their cartoon counterparts. Well, there is an explanation for that, fans. Let's get Ratchet out of the way here for the moment. The original Ironhide toy, or at least the toy that eventually became Ironhide, was originally made in Japan in the 1970s. If you remember from my Optimus Prime video where I showed off an original advertisement for many of the toys from this original toy line, you would remember seeing this one. This is what Ironhide looked like in the original Japanese toy line before being painted red for the Transformer toy line. And in the Japanese line, he, like many of the other Autobots, were a piloted mecha, not a sentient robot. We'll bring this one up here closer. You take a look there in the seat. There is a little man in there. We'll wiggle him out so you can get a look at him here. You see? Little driver. That is why the toy did not have a head. It was a piloted battle suit in the similar vein to the Veritech units from Macross or Robotech, or even the units seen in the various Mobile Suit Gundam anime. But instead, when it was brought over for the Transformers, the seat was instead given a robot face sticker. It may not be coming off too well on the camera, but that's what it was replaced with. Of course, a small company later in the more modern times did make spe a special two-pack of heads so that you could make your Ratchet and Ironhide characters more cartoon accurate, if that is your desire. Being the Autobot head of security, Ironhide also served as the bodyguard to Optimus Prime or to any other important characters that the Autobots would have deemed necessary. It's said that Ironhide is built from not only stronger and more durable armor plating, but also has a more obsolete system on the inside, thus making him one of the more difficult Autobots to repair from battle damage. As many of you probably are already aware, Ironhide was one of the more tragic figures seen in the 1986 animated movie, where he was brutally gunned down by the Decepticons, 
only to have a more explosive finale at the end of the battle at the hands of Megatron. Let's take a little closer look at the toy, and one thing that's different about him versus all of the other Autobot cars like him is that Ironhide is a two-piece unit, just like his buddy Ratchet will also be. The robot stands on a battle platform. That serves as the weapons instead, as there are no holes in his fists, nor do the weapons clamp onto him. I think first we'll take a look here at his battle platform. We'll get it up close to the camera so you can get a good look at it. It stands on a set of three different tank treads, so that would purportedly give it some mobility, although I would guess very slow. The sidewalls here almost look like that they could hold a transformer, but I wouldn't go with anything more heavy than a MicroMaster on that. And even at that, they'd be standing up a little too high to make the sidewall cover of any value. I think this was more intended for some of the little pilots in the original toy line to stand at. And of course, you got a little seat down in here that would have been perfect for the little guy to sit at let's get him back out here let's get the little man out again and we'll take a look at that see how well he sits in there in you go move the gun out of the way a little bit and yeah, use the gun to kind of hold him in, and aside from him sitting there a little lopsided, that's better. Yeah, that doesn't look too that that really doesn't look too bad. You know, let's stand him up along the side, and nope. Nope, that isn't going to work too well for him either. Still leaves too much exposed for battle. And of course, you got up here the missile launcher, which of course it does not fire. It just holds them. Now, strangely enough, this would be the part where I would say that Hasbro neutered these toys, but get the old one back out here the original, and same thing. And before we get any smart Alex out there that say you're using one of the modern issued remakes, here's his box. This is the original one from the 1970s, so no, it's not. We got a genuine original down here on the floor. Now, moving on to Ironhide himself. Pretty basic, bare-bones robot, to say the least. Downside is, is that the backside's pretty uninteresting. But, of course, Ironhide partially makes up for it in his articulation. Like many of his Autobot buddies, a fair amount of it is in the arms. You can rotate the arm all the way around, but with the way the joint is here on the shoulder, you can bring the arms in like that or swing them all the way around behind his back, rather impossibly. But this gives you quite a range of posability for him. And of course, you also have a joint down here at the ankle where you could try to do some kicks, but those don't come off looking very good. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start now by transforming Ironhide. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is we want to make sure to get the loose pieces out of the way, so remove the gun. 
and the missile from the battle platform. We're going to set the platform aside and we will start by transforming Ironhide himself. The first thing we do is we're going to fold his feet backward like so to form the rear wheels. The next, we just grab the head and chest assembly and just fold it upwards until it comes to a restful stop. Then you just rotate the arms so the tires are facing the same way as they are on the legs. And then you just fold the arms into the side. Try to get it so they go under and snap into place. There we go. You know, in some ways, without the rest of the van, he almost does look like Cop. Now, when we have the back portion, you'll fold the missile launcher down onto the black stalk, and then just fold it down so it rests in the seat. Then you'll take the sides of the van, the sides of the platform, rather, and fold them up, and click them together, like so. And then fold up the front platform, like so. The back two treads, you want to rotate them upward, like so, just a little bit, not too much. And then fold the entire assembly inside. Like that. And then finally, the single front tread just folds into its own cubby. And then... You put the whole unit together. Just like that. And then you have his alternate mode. A Nissan One Box Cherry Vanette. Vanette, of course, is minivan. Now, while a lot of fans give this alternate mode a lot of flack due to it being a minivan, but, remember, the original tagline for the Transformers is Robots in Disguise. So, this alternate mode would blend in in more of the environments that many of us would encounter than many of the others would. I mean, let's face it, a fair amount of his counterparts were sports car or racing cars. How many of those do you really see driving on the streets in your neighborhood? If you're anything like me, you probably didn't see very many, if at all. As for how well it moves, well, it doesn't move too bad. It doesn't move as far, though, due to how tight the connections are around the wheels here, but... You know, give it a few taps. He does, does roll pretty good across this floor, across the table here. So that's not too bad. Not bad at all. The only real downside to the appearance, bring it up real close here, is that unfortunately you can see a lot of the kibble for the battle platform inside the windows. That's really about the only negative I have with it. Otherwise, it's not bad. Now we'll take a look at Ironhide's loose pieces, and we're going to start with one that is not mentioned on any of the instructions or parts lists. This is the hip shield. It's normally found right here, right dead center on the toy. It is removable. It serves no real practical use whatsoever beyond that, but it is a removable piece, and if you are picky and you want your iron hide or even ratchet to be complete, you'll need to make sure it has this piece. And then we move on to his gun. 
The instructions refer to this as a static laser gun. But unlike most of the weapons, there is something fancy about it and something that all of you collectors will want to pay attention to, and that's this red post underneath. The gun post, as it's labeled in the instructions, is removable. So this would be what the gun looks like without it. And then you have this red post. And believe it or not, this red post is one of the more sought-after items in the Transformer line, especially given the fact that it's with two toys. So... Always keep an eye out on that when buying a loose iron hide. And then lastly, iron hide has three, three of these little tiny missiles. They're all done in chrome. So always, like all the parts, say for that gun post, always check the level of chrome wear. And of course, there's little tiny fins, but this is this is a pretty solid toy. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding any that have that aren't damaged. But there you go, Iron Hide's loose parts. Now we'll take a look at Iron Hide's instructions. And this was the style done back in 1984. They were in full color. You get a look at all the parts. As we've pointed out on many of the others, the sticker sheet was obviously taken from the Japanese toy. We start by building the battle platform. And then how to make the robot. And then put on all those stickers. And lastly, on the last page, reminding you to clip your and save your robot points and how to read your tech specs. So, speaking of tech specs, we shall get out his. It has a picture of Ironhide. This would have matched what was on the front of the box. It's done in red to signify he's an Autobot, and even says it. It gives his name as Ironhide, and lists his function as security. His motto is, High-tech circuitry is no replacement for guts. Go chew on a microchip, is Ironhide's slogan. Prefers action to words. Oldest, toughest, most battle-tested Autobot. Bodyguard to Optimus Prime, in charge of guarding anything of importance. Gruff but kind. Trilithia, trithelium steel skin makes him nearly invulnerable to attack. Shoots a variety of liquids from supercooled nitrogen to superheated lead. Has sonar, radar, radio wave detector. Slowest and most fragile of the group. Now, this most fragile bit does refer to what I had stated earlier about him, that apparently the interior, his interior is of an older design, thus making him more of a challenge to repair after battle. Now, we place the decoder over the grid and see what we've got. It gives his strength as 7, his intelligence is also 7, his speed is a dismal 3, his endurance is 9, his rank is 7, his courage is 10, his firepower and his skill are 7. So Ironhide is an above average warrior with a good amount of courage, 
But, like it also mentioned, very slow on speed. Now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of Ironhide? Ironhide has always been a classic character and a fan favorite among many. In the cartoon series, Ironhide was voiced by Peter Cullen, famous for also voicing Optimus Prime. In fact, in some of the bonus things for the live-action Transformer movies, Cullen did audition to voice both characters. Whereas, unfortunately, due to how Michael Bay is, he only would be allowed to voice the more classic Optimus Prime, and Ironhide would be voiced by somebody else. As a character, Ironhide is a necessity in the group the bodyguard to Optimus Prime, and the standard old tough guy. He could probably give some of the old tough guys in Hollywood a run for his money. As a toy, Ironhide isn't bad. This is where he suffers the most due to the way he was designed. But if you're willing to overlook the way he was designed, by thinking back to how the original toy was done up, it's more, will, it's more willing to forgive the potential flaws on it. I mean, granted, yes, the loss of a head is minor. I mean, I understand, the, I understand that there are fans that want an actual robot head for him. But there are a few fans, myself included, that are perfectly fine with how the toy does come out. It does offer a fair amount of articulation, and the battle platform, while looking kind of silly here on him, it does have a little bit of different play value. But, going more with the majority of how some of the deficiencies of it are, I'm going to put Ironhide in the middle tier. He just barely makes it from reaching the top tier due to the limitations of the battle platform. The platform itself is also rather fragile as these lower tank treads down here, the twosome at the back, they are rather fragile and repeated twisting of them will cause them to eventually break off and then the platform is essentially useless. That's speaking from experience from my own childhood. So, I'm going to have to go with the middle tier for Ironhide here, folks. That's the one major gripe that I have is just the fragility of the platform. And that concludes my review of the Generation 1 Autobot Security Agent Ironhide. If you like the video, thumbs up it here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Please also consider liking this video and share your thoughts in the comments section below. Let me know what you think of Ironhide. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.